Okay, hi, and uh, welcome to the uh, first lecture in uh, Finance 3320, the introduction to finance. Uh, my name is Dr. Holcomb, uh, and uh, welcome to the class. Uh, hopefully everybody has already watched the uh, introductory video that I made. Uh, if you haven't, please just quit this, go back, watch that introductory video. It'll help you get a feel for the class, what to expect from the class, where we're going, all that kind of thing. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's only about 30 minutes, so it's a pretty short video. So please just go back and watch that, then come back and start this lecture. Uh, this is the, uh, again, the introductory lecture. And what that means for us is that it's, this lecture uh, is mostly gonna be review, review of accounting, and uh, a little bit just sort of general information about what finance is and where you, we are gonna go in the class and what you can hopefully expect to learn from the class, okay? So uh, we will start with our sort of broad overview of finance in general. And then we'll move on to the review of accounting, or at least the, the review of accounting that we will need in this class, okay? Again, as I talk about in the introductory lecture, uh, you, finance and accounting are pretty uh, commingled. There is a lot of information and a lot of uh, uh, learning, uh, or a lot of topics that are gonna sound familiar, hopefully, and there's a lot of accounting that we're gonna need to use in finance, so I don't expect you to be an expert accountant by any means but certainly familiarity with the major financial statements is gonna be a huge plus. Uh, so that's what we'll try to go over a little bit in this introductory lecture. But if all of this is sounding really, really strange to you, then you either need to go back and review this all on your own from your accounting uh, course, or maybe perhaps think about postponing this class until you feel more comfortable, okay? So again, we'll start with our uh, broad overview of finance. And, and basically the broad overview of finance is pretty straightforward. Okay? So at least in this class, we're gonna talk about something called corporate finance. And corporate finance is uh, specifically the finance of corporations. And a corporation is a major incorporated, that's where the word corporation comes from. Uh, incorporated is a legal term, uh, it, but a major incorporated firm. So when we say corporations, we're talking about the biggest uh, most profitable companies in the world, the ones that you've heard of before, uh, all the way down to some that you may, you um, certainly have never heard of before, but by and large, corporations are large firms. And so that means that the questions that we are going to talk about and the things that we're going to address in a corporate finance class are not the same that you would say address in a personal finance course. Okay? So this is not a personal finance course. This is not a course about your own investments or your own tax or retirement decisions. This is not a course about your own investment choices or buying a house or things like that. Okay. This is specifically a course about corporation financial, financial decisions. So how a corporation behaves and how it manages its money. Okay. Now, there is definitely some overlap between those two areas. So there is going to be a lot of cases where I am able to tie the ideas that we're discussing from a corporate context into a personal context. Uh, maybe, and, and I, I do that in the hopes that that prepares you a little bit for most of you that aren't finance majors, prepares you a little bit for your own financial world and your own financial well-being, uh, whether or not you've had a personal finance course um, notwithstanding. Okay? But that doesn't mean that that's what this course is about. So I just wanna set the expectations here. Right. We may use examples and we may, I try to use examples and talk about uh, and connect back to personal finance choices to help uh, sort of, for better or worse, humanize the decisions that corporations make. But that doesn't mean that that's the goal of this course. Okay. So the goal of this course is to under, understand what corporations do and how they think about their finances. And in that context, there are sort of three main goals uh, or three main questions that a corporate finance class should try to address. Okay? And the first one is sort of the big thought, thought provoking one. And that is when we're talking about a corporation, the first question we have to ask ourselves about a corporation is what do we do, right? A corporation is formed, a firm is formed with a goal in mind. It is to provide some kind of product or service that isn't currently being provided or that can be provided in a better way or something like that, but a firm is formed, is created with a goal in mind. Right? We don't just create a business and then go out and try to find something to do. It's always the other way around, right? 
And that can be very, a uh, very specific question or it can be a very broad question, right? So for instance, you can think about a firm like Pizza Hut that has a very specific goal, right? Pizza Hut makes and sells pizzas, right? Now they might branch out a little bit and also serve some desserts or, uh, you know, start making some ice cream or, uh, you know, maybe open some locations that also have, you know, bars so they serve alcoholic drinks or something like that. But by and large, their central theme of their business, what do we do is we sell pizzas, right? Pizza Hut does not have a tire shop located next to every uh, restaurant so that they can also change your tires while you eat, right? That's just not what they do. But for other firms, that can be a very broad and uh, um, encapsulate a very broad question. And it can encapsulate a lot of different sort of businesses if you think about it that way. So you can think about firms like Google, which has any number of uh, different businesses, right? They have uh, all of their web applications from search and advertising and, uh, you know, Gmail and all the stuff that they provide to universities and, and, and businesses in terms of, uh, you know, computer and IT management. Uh, they also do web hosting and, and all that kinds of things, but they also have lots of unusual businesses. They operate, you know, uh, uh, a, a major like self-driving car um, project. They have health projects, they have space projects, they have all kinds of different projects. Or you could think about a firm like General Electric, which over the past century and a half has evolved into a company that does basically anything. They make uh, light bulbs and um, washing machines and dishwashers. They also make MRI machines and nuclear submarine engines and wind turbines. Uh, they do and make everything. At one point they were operating one of the biggest consumer banks and credit card businesses in the world. So they are, are huge uh, and they do all kinds of things. For, so for a company like that, what do we do is not a very specific question contrasted with a company like Pizza Hut where it is a very specific question. But that is something that a financial manager is going to have to uh, think about all the time. And it's something that has to be addressed by the founders of the firm right off the bat, okay? So a firm is rarely formed to do everything that is something that they might evolve to. So that question kind of has two parts. What do we do? It has one part that's answered by the founders when the firm is created. It has another part that is answered by the financial managers and the, the CEO as the firm evolves, right? Over the lifetime of the firm, that question might change. So it isn't a static question. It's something that we have to keep asking ourselves. Okay? The second question, once we've decided what the firm does, we have to ask ourselves, what should the firm invest in? How does the firm continue to uh, take the firm's money and, pr uh, and move it along the path that it has set for itself, right? So if you're Pizza Hut and what you are going to do is a very specific thing, you're going to make and sell pizzas, then your investment decisions are going to completely revolve around furthering that business, right? So a new investment for Pizza Hut is, opening up new stores, or perhaps moving into a country where there wasn't already a pizza. Or maybe it's even as simple as just developing and releasing a new kind of pizza, or a dessert pizza, or something like that, right? Those are the investment decisions that Pizza Hut is taking its revenue that it generates and then turning around and trying to propel the business forward along this path. Now, for a firm like Google, that is, again, a much, much bigger question. It's a much, much bigger uh, potential uh, answer because they could and do take their money and invest in all kinds of things, right? Google has a whole division where they only invest in what they call X projects, which are just random uh, projects unrelated with any of the rest of their businesses usually that are, uh, you know, intended to sort of set Google up into the next major realm. So that's where their self-driving car thing comes from. That's totally out of left field for a company like Google in, in general, uh, and not something that you would normally, if you were an investor in a company, be hoping that your company is doing, right? When you, as an investor, are providing funds to a company, and we'll talk about what all that kind of stuff means, but when you, as an investor, or any investor, are, are, are participating in a company, uh, financially in a company, you're hoping that they are using their expertise in a certain field uh, to manage their money efficiently and not just throwing money away on random projects. Okay? So 
this question of what do we do with the money that we generate? How do we invest that and continue to further the business uh, or improve it or continue to make new profits or advance the plan that we've uh, set for ourselves is a, is a really important one. And it's sort of the one that we're going to focus on the most in this class. Right? It is we're going to put ourselves in the shoes of the financial management team and we're going to let them let the, understand how the financial management team evaluates investment decisions for the firm and moving forward. Now, the final major question that we're going to talk about in this class uh, is the also sort of the secondary goal of the financial manager, which is once we've decided what the firm does and we've also decided what we would like to invest our money in, the third thing that we have to address is how do we raise the money to make those investments? Okay. Now, this is a multi-part sort of question because it is a very complicated thing to think about, right? And it's going to be a very different uh, answer from a corporate finance perspective than it might be from an individual perspective. Because broadly speaking, you could correlate these same three questions back to your own life. You could say, what do I want to do with my life? How do I want to spend my money? And how do I get that money? And the answers to those questions would be somewhat similar and at the same time, somewhat different between your own personal choices and a firm's options and choices. Okay, so uh, the way that we would think about the way that a firm raises money or generates money to invest in furthering its business is again in three parts. The first part is what I like to call the piggy bank. The firm generates revenue and some of that revenue is turned into the firm's savings account, what we call retained earnings, right? So some of the profit is paid out, uh, is paid out to the owners of the firm in the, in the form of a dividend. Again, this is stuff that we'll talk about throughout the rest of the class. So don't worry if this doesn't sound like things that you've heard before. But some of the profit is shared with the owners of the firm. And some of the profit is saved inside of the firm itself for future investments, okay? So just like we would save our own money in order to buy something that we might want that we couldn't afford just out of, you know, whatever we had, we have a savings account to save up a large amount of money, a firm does the same thing. And that is typically the way that a firm is going to look at its potential opportunities is, can I pay for this first out of the savings account? And when that, when projects are more expensive than a firm can typically save for, in a reasonable amount of time, a firm has other options. What they can also do is they can raise debt, where debt is the term for any kind of loan financing. Okay, so a loan from a bank, a loan from some public entity, a loan, uh, what we call a bonds, which are a sort of distributed public loan. Uh, all of those things uh, fall under the heading of debt, and that is another way that a firm can raise money. They can borrow that money in order to make big investments. Okay, so a firm's got a new project, they need to raise a bunch of money in order to buy all the supplies or machinery or whatever. Uh, they, uh, they can first look in the piggy bank, they can second try to take out a loan, they can raise debt. Uh, and if even that's not enough, and of course for the biggest corporations, there isn't another entity large enough to give them a loan for some of the projects that they undertake. Right? So for instance, you can imagine a couple, company like Apple their trillion dollar company, they were the world's first trillion dollar company, uh, they, the projects that they undertake might be require investment of many billions of dollars, which reaches a point where uh, any bank is not big enough to make a loan to one entity in that range, right? They just can't justify uh, loaning somebody that kind of money. So at some point, borrowing becomes impossible. And the final sort of, the final type of money that we can raise, the final source of financing that we can raise is called equity. And equity refers to the selling of a part of the firm, right? What we say is the firm sells shares of itself, okay? And that is how a firm can raise the most money, right? And it is how many, many firms at all public corporations uh, have raised money at some point in the, in the past is by selling pieces of themselves. Okay? So again, we will spend 
a good amount of time talking about those different types of financing. So I, I won't spend a huge amount of time talking about them now. This is just illustrating the uh, the timeline for the class. Here's all the things we're going to talk about and sort of in that general order. 